And welcome one and all to the Ring Weekly Catch-Up. Lots to talk about, lots to talk about. But I think we'll kick off today, obviously my partner in crime, pro boxer Jack 13 Morris. I think we'll kick off today talking about what happened at the weekend. But not just what happened at the weekend, elements of the media and the weekend. Let's go firstly to the fight at the weekend. Obviously we had... Uh, Armenian-born King Arthur Abraham, or as Cole Frotch likes to call him, Arthur. Fighting our very own Paul Smith, who I'm a big fan of. Love Paul Smith. No problem with that at all. I think you'd agree with me the scores are a little bit wide. Yep. Who won the fight? Paul Smith. Do you think Paul, Paul, uh, you think Paul Smith? Yes, I do. No problem. I haven't got a problem with that. No problem. I don't think he did. I think Arthur Abraham won the fight. Hmm. Okay. The scores, their they're opinion. Uh, they're, they're, they were just ridiculous, you know, irrelevant to the, the conversation we're about to have. Very good. Thank you. The result. The result. Would me and you, it couldn't be would you, me and you end up having a row because mm. Arthur Abraham won the fight? No, no, not, no. But, I mean, you kind of half expected it when the final bell went. I, I think the most that Abraham should have got out of that fight is a draw. And I watched it. Arthur, Arthur Abraham was the champion, right? As a champion. So he, he uh, most, retains? He, he retains the title. Right, okay. But either way, I don't think there's no, there's no way you could have given him the decision, in my, in my opinion. I think it, was a, it wasn't the worst one I've seen, but... For sure. It was, it was a case of, here we go, final bell's gone. I've, you know, I knew that Smith weren't going to get it. The exactly. same as Macklin St uh, exactly. Stern. So this is the point I'm making. This is that At the end of the day, you're fighting what is fundamentally a German lad on a German promotion with a German promoter who's just signed another English kid in Grovesy. Yeah? So he's got various different ways he can go. In a close fight, Paul Smith isn't going to get that decision in a month of Sundays, is he? Now, I can understand people turning around and saying, you know what, those scores were ridiculous. But the sort of uproar that I've seen since seems to be completely out of whack with what I saw in front of me. If someone had turned around that night and said Paul Smith had won the fight, I'd have gone, oh, great. One round, two rounds, maybe nicked it on the last, on, on, in the 10th round, because he weren't too incredible in, in 11 and 12. But the fact that the other kid got it, and the, and the, the fuss that the skylock kicked up was completely disproportionate to exactly what went on in front of us. Injustice, the wideness of the scores, I get it. But the truth of the matter is, the decision itself, could you really argue one way or the other? Close fight, kid, German kid, at home, boxing on a German uh, promoter's show, wins the fight. It's kind of seen that a zillion times. What's the big deal? Now this is the big deal for me. That Sky team, I think they're a little out of whack. I think they blow things out of proportion. I think you've got that thing going on where you've got the British world champions scenario and it's all a little bit like, well, okay, it's, it's, it's a British guy, he's lost a closed fight. What's the big deal? But because it's such a little island, a lot of our fighters are built into something they're not. We're, they, they pump it down to us, they he's, he's world class, he's world class, when they're not. They end up in world title fights and then surprisingly enough get smashed to bits because they shouldn't be there in the first place. And this is the point I'm trying to make. I've got to say, Steve Bunce, Steve Lillis, and the Jones lad, the former super featherweight kid on Box Nation, I think they punched the living daylights out the other lot on Sky when it comes to actually informed information, when it comes to media and boxing. What's your opinion? Um, <clears throat> I don't know, really. I don't... Well, I should I hope you would. We're on TV. Well, no, no, no. But you, you just <laughs> Box Nation is a totally different setup. It's more ad lib, isn't it? As, as they go, whereas I think I, Sky I, is more I, formatted. I'm not too sure. I'm not. Um, too, well, it is. It is format. I mean, don't get me. I like Ed Robinson. I think mm. Ed Robinson's an interesting guy. But you had Jim Watt, who I've defended in the past. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's like what, the, what are you watching? It's not that big a deal. And you've got the other lad who sits there with Johnny Nelson. He's the guy who's in charge of Sky TV. Uh, Adam Smith. Adam Smith. I mean, I think he's arts in the right place, but it always seems a strange dynamic for me personally, 
going up alarming about it. And it was kind of like, why are you blowing this into something to me that it isn't? And I don't think the lads at Box Nation would have had anything. They'd have turned around. I think the boys at Box Nation would have turned around and said, those scores are completely ridiculous. But you couldn't really argue with the result. And that wasn't what Sky was saying. They were saying the scores were out. Paul Smith never lost that fight. Boom, boom, boom. And it was all completely disproportionate. Now, why am I making such a fuss about this? Because it comes down to the products. The products of boxing and people, us people who pay to watch it, being given correct information from supposed professionals about what's really happening in front of us, as opposed to being manipulated into spaces where we think he's this and he's that. Because if more people were more honest about boxing, the right sort of fights would happen. That's my opinion. And I like, that. I like the lads down at Box Nation, I've got to tell you, I could sit there and listen to those guys all day long. I think, I think they're pretty similar to the ones on Sky, to be honest with you. I think they get overexcited like the guys on Sky. Right, um, okay. It's let's, let's hold our hands up. Me and you never used to be big Steve Bunt fans, did we? No, I'm still not really. Okay, fair enough. Overly cockney. But I got phoned up by Steve Bunt, so obviously you know when Norgie mm. and everything, and he was absolutely superb. And I can tell you, being a bit of a theatrical kind of character myself, that there's two different people. The Steve Bunt you see on TV is doing it for show. There's a bit of theatre involved. When you actually talk to the man, he's a very interesting man, very grounded guy. And... You know, after having that conversation with Ron, I was very, very impressed. Spoke to Steve Lillis, again, very impressed. Spoke to some other guys who are quite high ranking in the boxing media. I'm not going to mention names. That's not what I do when I'm being detrimental. I'd rather say it to people's faces. Absolutely diabolical. But those two boys, I think, are spot on the money. On the boxing side on Sky, I don't know. It's, to me, it's a little bit out of whack. I don't think it's quite the product it should be. I personally think it should be better. I think they should be more analytical, more honest about it, and say their piece in a more balanced manner. Yeah, I think I think with, with Sky commentary, they kind of side towards the way that they should be. That you know, if Paul Smith's fighting, if you if you notice that Jim Watt was all Abraham because they thought that Abraham was going to sort of possibly take him out within six rounds. Everything Abraham was doing for the first one to six rounds was wonderful. And then you could kind of see Paul Smith kind of floating into the fight. And all of a sudden, sort of his jump ships, Jim Watt, again, like overly to Paul Smith. All gets Smith. a bit excited, doesn't yeah. it? Um, yeah, with, I mean, with Steve Bunch, I'm not a fan of his. I don't dislike him. I don't like him. I don't know him. But he, one thing I will say that what he does actually do is he will be totally straight with the decision if he you know there would sure, be no yeah. dressing it up it would be one way or the other and um, I think that's that's maybe the difference what you're trying to explain I think well I, 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 I'm sorry if I haven't explained it clearly because that's exactly what I'm trying to say when you listen to Barry Jones speak or Steve Lillis or uh, Steve Bunce I think that what they truly think they say they don't inflame the situation and there's a little bit more that it's a, to be honest with you it seems like a much more informed opinion less emotional so the boys at Box Nation, liking you, probably kicking myself in the teeth here because the sky, not totally convinced, not totally convinced. Might need to have a look, for me personally, as a massive boxing fan who loves watching Sky, who pays for Sky, and also for Box Nation, I'd like to see maybe a few changes here. Might need a bit of a change up. Okay, my feeling is, I thought Abraham couldn't really argue it. You thought Paul Smith, but you wouldn't have argued if it had gone the other way. And uh, let's hope that Paul Smith you know, it's going to be hard for Paul Smith, isn't it? Because if the gal ends up beating Frotchy, I can't see Frotchy ever fighting Paul Smith. If the gal beats Paul Smith, who's going to fight? Who's going to pay to see Paul Smith versus the gal? Who's going to pay to see Paul Smith versus Groves? No one, no, no. one, no one. So the only way he was ever going to get back into the throw, uh, to and fro of it, was if he won that fight and he didn't win that fight. Yeah. Which isn't to say he's not a brilliant fighter, loving the de death, but... On the other side of it, I'm going back to saying I spoke to you about I reckon the Sourlands, in their mind, they're thinking to themselves... I'll get Grovesy in with um, Abraham. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Gonna, yeah, he's going to... Well, you, you, we, we spoke about this about a week and a bit ago, and you said that wouldn't happen. Yeah, no, 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 no. I said it wouldn't happen now. If you want to rewind... Oh, no, it's effect, definitely going to happen. The reason, be, the reason being is I still think they've got money in Abraham. You know, if, if he's got... Paul Smith was yeah, meant to hold be... Hold on, Mick. Can you, we're, we're filming here. Don't go behind the film. This is common sense, I thought. He's a very intelligent man. Do you mind just putting the bike down there for a second? Thank you very much. If you if you see if you see uh, if you see uh, something representing uh, Bigfoot walking in the background, that'd have been uh, like Mick. If you wouldn't mind, yeah. Our studio. 
Uh, yeah, so that's a no-brainer. I mean, I'm very interested in the way this is going to roll out, but I was talking to uh, a very good friend of the gyms, Wayne Alwen, and I was saying to him, oh, if, I was, if I was Froch's people, I wouldn't be touching the girl. I really I, wouldn't. I, I don't go, need. No, no, well, I think there will be, but build the fire a little bit longer. I'd love to see him go off and do what he really wants to do. That's what I'm do. saying. I don't Make the Chavez fight. I don't I'd think, love to see that happen. I don't think... I don't, I'm not really that interested in the girl, Froch, to be honest with you. I think it's... Oh, I'm interested in it. I think um, it'd be great. It's... Uh, Who wins that fight? De Gaulle. I think De Gaulle too. No, I think the De reason Gaulle, is stylistically, yeah. he's all he's all he's all wrong. He's all wrong, and that's why I don't want Frotch to fight him. Yeah. Basically, I'd right. rather see him go off to Vegas because he, he's he's, he's, is, earned, he's, earned, he's from uh, the from the Groves fight. All the stick he was getting, and me being one of them. Um, the fact is, the me way not that, me not being one of them, thinking yeah, that it was stopped at the right well, time. No, that's yeah. what I said. That's what I said. No, I, I said, no, 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 I, said I, I, I didn't say that it it was um it, it wasn't stopped at the right time. Did I? So why were you having a go at uh, Froch? I thought that Groves would beat him in a rematch because I thought Groves looked faster. I thought that he'd sort out his condition. What did I say more. about the rematch? Be honest. You said you said Froch would win. Yeah, of course. Because if that kid can't beat Froch when Froch looks absolutely terrible, how's he going to beat him when the kid's turning up and he knows he's up? That's my right. point. Listen, at the end of the day, it's all here because you never really know how a fight, fight's going to roll out. So that's yeah. actually a piece of poop with me to try and leverage that with you. So but the point, but the point I'm making is, it is interesting because if the girl and Froch fight, mm. and if the girl wins, then that whole Grosey, the girl Frochy UK roll, ruling that title for about 18 months, probably on pay per view potentially, is on, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm, again, I, I'd, I'd just rather see Froch kind of have his one or two fights in Vegas, you know, big fights. Chavez, I think. Do you think Froch is going to be able to walk away that cleanly? I don't think so. I think. I, th- I, yeah, I would love I, to I, see I, it. I think he can. I, I think wish he, he can. would. I, I wish he would. To be honest with you, I think he could retire now and be a, you know. Oh, he should. Oh, you could, yeah. you know, I know a lot of people used to turn around and say, Cal Zaggy, could he beat him? Couldn't he beat him? And I don't think he could, to be perfectly honest with you. But it doesn't really matter. No. Who's done the sort of stuff in British boxing that Froch has done? I mean, who of them? Yeah, Not one I'm of them's done what he's done. Yeah. You know, he's gone over there, he's beaten them in their own backyard, he's been in a Super 6 tournament, beaten most of them. The only guy he didn't beat was the one we said he wouldn't beat, which is Andre Ward. You know, and could you really turn around and say that Andre Ward is the fighting man that Cole Froch is? I don't think so. He don't even move out of his own state to have a fight. You know, no, exactly, Froch exactly. has been amazing. And I'm like you, I wish he'd just go, you know what, I've had enough of it, but it won't happen like that, it mm. never does. I'm interested to see how the girl, I like the girl a lot, I think the girl's a great, great fighter, I think he's been undervalued for quite a long time, and I'd like to see him get his just dues, and that's a world title. Grovesy, I think he's made what he's got go a long way, a what a long way, and fair play to him, but um, I think if he was to fight the girl again, I think the girl would beat him handily. Judging on, on uh, his last performance, uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Matt Macklin at the weekend, tell me about it. Yeah, he, I mean, it was, it was kind of, I, it's one of those marking time fights, you know, he's had a lot go on with his trainer being shot and whatnot. I think he just wanted to get out, get active. It, it weren't overly superb, but you wouldn't expect him to be in, in that sort of fight. But so. Where does Matt Macklin, oh, he's still boxing at middleweight, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Where does he really go right now? He's, he's got. He's, I think basically he's, you know, he's going to try and angle for another world title. Um, Who does he beat out there? This is it. This is. It. I mean. I mean, you've seen what happened with Golovkin. Does he get past Kid Chocolate? I'd give Billy J. Saunders. Billy J. Saunders would beat Matt Macklin. I think that'd be a great fight for Billy J. Saunders. That'd be a great fight for Billy J. Saunders. The 29th of uh, as Eubanks as. Uh, right. This leads us on to the next yeah. thing, which is we'll finish this little section with this, and I'm very interested. Because I've always admired the way that you pick people. You pick people very well. Boom, he's this, he's that. And it's nine times out of ten. I'll give you your due, you're right. Tell me about Chris Eubank Jr. What is he? Is he a bully? Is he a winner? Is he a strange kind of place that sits in between all of these things? Is he overrated? Should his dad get out of the way? Is his dad going to up his career? Thank you. The, the second one is in a strange place with all these all these things. And I, I, for the life of me, if the money, the money must have been good of for that. What, Billy is, what I've been told. What sort of dough you've been told? I've been told 150 grand. Oh, I've got to take that, in you? You got to take that. Six. He's been a six-round yeah. fighter, yeah. fighting journeyman. Yeah, yeah. He's into 150k. You've got to take that all day take, long. And, and, and like I say, you know, if he, 
puts a good account of himself in. It's not. It's not. And all... there's a very good chance that he would have. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. in fairness to Chris Eubank Jr., and I'm not totally convinced either way. But I'm being perfectly honest. I've said what I think, which is he should come from a really good gene pool. He's done what he should have done at the kind of level of opposition he's been up against. And he's obviously a very strong kid. I presume he takes a great shot as well. He spars in brilliant company. But as you know, a fight and a spar is a different thing. And when you're going into those levels in a real competitive scenario, you don't know what's going to happen. My feeling was that Billy Joe Saunders has a bit of a torrid time early. I could see the kid coming out the blocks and doing quite well early before Billy Joe establishes himself and stops the kid sort of six to eight. Would you see it going that way? Again, I, I, I don't know what way. I'd, I'd, I'd see it Billy Joe Saunders winning. Are you saying but irrelevant? Take the 150 grand. I'm Why saying, have you pulled out of this fight? I'm saying, yeah, go up and fight your heart out and, and, and do what boxers should do and, and, and fight the man because, you know, all the talks, it's bit, you know... I think, I think Chris Eubank Senior is beginning to stuff him a bit, if I'm being honest. I don't know whether it's him. I don't know basically Well, what that's it. what Frank Warren said the other day. He was, uh, Frank Warren was interviewed the other day, and I think his words along the lines of this negotiation has got very strange. He can't really get a lot of logic out of Chris Eubank Senior, um, and so they've arrived at this place where the contract hasn't been I, signed. I think they need to realise who the draw is, and that's Billy Joe Saunders, it's not Chris Eubank Jr. And that's where I think uh, Chris Senior... Is kind of, I think he thinks his son's like. Okay, up there. Well, it's just the point I'm and making. He's not, you know. If, he, if he's actually dealing with the management side of it, how can he be objective about his son? You can see he loves him to bits. He thinks mm. he's going to be better than Floyd Mayweather uh, uh, Jr., apparently. I mean, you only have to be watching the TV and listen to the man talk about his son. Completely understandable, completely emotional, no place for it in negotiation. And I think he's going to screw him. Well, if, if you don't, obviously, I don't know whether this fight's going to go ahead or not. Currently, no. But 150 grand, like. Uh, well, I suppose he's thinking himself. If, if they're up with 150 grand, we've got until November 29th. To try he and keeps, up it. Yeah, yeah, cool. So if I get 200k out of this, but for the sake of 50 grand, why would you bum off the 150? Mm, I've, I've, I've read somewhere this morning that um, that Billy Joe Song is possibly fighting for the vacant WBO world title. Well, if I was Billy Joe Song, that's what I'd do. That's I'd what I'd do. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, wait for you. I'll get you in 2016. I don't even think he, I wouldn't even fight him again. I wouldn't even give him that offer. Well, at the end of the day, the money's going to dictate whether that happens or not because that's what happens in boxing. A pound note makes a lot of egos get out of the way. Um, but uh, I was very surprised with the old scenario, and I think it's a strange way. They're kind of like, it's, it, Chris Eubank Jr. is going to look bad at us. He's oh, kind of I, served I, him up a little I, bit. Yeah, and I think, I think, you know, with Warren as well, you know, printing printing posters, you know, announcing it, and for him... I like the idea of Frank Warren in his, in his back garden printing posters. <laughs> I like but the idea it's, of that. It's, you know, he, he's... Will he get on that well in boxing now? Do you know what I mean? Frank Warren's he's, quite he's, a big he's, character. He's, yeah, he, he seems signed, to have really signed, screwed him. Yeah, yeah. He, he, signed, he signed with him, isn't he? But again, you know, I suppose it comes down to the same thing. If he is signed as his promoter, he's locked into that, he can always turn around and I suppose it comes down to that conflict, isn't it? Yeah, you sign me to promote, but I want more money. Mm. So that'd be the argument they'd have. And I suppose if they put that in front <coughs> of the board of control to try and release them from that contract, the real question is if Frank Warren bombed him off or tried to bomb off his career, Frank Warren was released from that contract, who else is going to pick him up? Is Matram going to pick him up? Why would Matram pick him up? No, I, I He was with Hennessy previously, have, so he's so. obviously gone, Hennessy, right, well, step up a notch, go to uh, Warren, step up a notch, which is realistic now, Matram. Matram and Warren are pretty close, but obviously you'd go Matram now above Warren, wouldn't you? Yeah. But why would Matram take him on? They've got enough people, they don't need him. And especially if they think, I've got to deal with Chris Eubank Senior, pain, yeah, pain might be a pain in the arse, I don't yeah. need it. Who knows? We'll have to see how it all rolls out. But Billy Joe Saunders, we're big fans of you. I love you on YouTube. You're very funny. Um, right, enough of that stuff. Got a little bit grovelly at the end there, didn't it? Yeah, a little bit like. Yeah, I'll take that. Pull your back. pants down, Billy. Yeah, sorry, Bill. I'm coming in. Sorry, Andy, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, let's go to a nutrition tip now from Fat Nige. <laughs> Protein. Protein only diets. Are they a sensible option for the training athlete? It's harder for the body to extract energy from protein than it is from carbs. It heats the body up, 
and that creates what we call the thermogenic effect. Now you will burn fat on a protein only diet, but doesn't it make more sense to actually do a controlled, balanced diet, incorporating good carbs, keep ourselves closer to our fighting weight? That way we eradicate the need for drastic energy sapping methods of losing weight for our fight. Remember, fight strong, not wrong. I'm Fat Nige. Fat Nige, you've got a nutrition tip from Fat Nige. Superb. Nothing better than getting a little bit of protein information from our man Nige. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to protein. Jack, let's have a chat about the fights that are coming up at the weekend. I'll throw some names at you. Josh Warrington. Yeah, tall, tall uh, featherweight guy. Um, not seen too much of him. I think he's been on Sky two or three times. Um, Where's he going? It's hard to say, really. I haven't seen enough of it. I mean, Matchroom have signed him up. He's fighting for a European title this week. Um, he looks decent enough. I don't think he carries the dig. You know, he's got two knockouts in 18 fights. But, you know, he's a young lad, so... You know, I think but Matchroom dead. obviously sees something, you know. Matchroom sees something. Actually, talking about that, that, Sam Eggington got signed up by Matchroom. John Pegg's lad, so well done to John Pegg and Sam. Good congratulations to them both. Obviously, Matchroom really flying. Great company to be involved with, I would have thought. Tyrone Nurse versus Dave Ryan. You think it's kind of going to be a bit of a, a, a good fight, this fight? I think it's a, yeah, I think it's a trade fight. You've got uh, Tyrone Nurse, tall, like freakishly tall. Uh, Guy, I guess. Did quite well in prize fight at Tyrone, didn't he? Yeah, um, he's, he's, I think he's last out, and I think he boxed Tyler Gajon and, and like literally, you know, really boxed his ears off. Um, he's fighting Dave Ryan, who, if he turns up, you know, he, he can give a lot of people a lot of problems. Um, it's just whether he turns up. Hopefully, and he'll turn up and it, it, the and style it'll be a should, nice should, mesh. should be a nice He's a guy. funny lad, that Tyrone Nurse, because I'm a friend of his on Facebook. And if you, he's got one of them faces, you'd never know he was a boxer. He's got one of my my mum would have described. He's got kind eyes, <laughs> <laughs> but he does look like a nice fella. Um, okay, Ricky Burns making his comeback against this chap Alexandre Lepley. Um, well, I, I should imagine they're trying to get him a win. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, the guy is, I think, uh, he's 18, five knockouts, one loss. So, um, I don't know what sort of company he's been mixing in, but I think, you know... What, what, what weight's this fight been made at? Um, I think it's uh, Light Welter. They've gone to Light, OK. Yeah. Oh, yeah, great, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Ricky Burns has got to win this one. I mean, if he doesn't, it's, it's kind of like, where's he going to go? Is he going to be a gate holder for... Yeah, British, yeah. European. If, you know. if in fact he didn't win this fight, you'd have to say the Ricky Burns story, in a strange way, becomes even more amazing. Mm. Because how did he do what he did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's almost like by the very powers of his own self persuasion, he won and defended the world lightweight title. How many times? Gosh, I don't know. You know, five, it, you know five, irrespective yeah, yeah, of yeah, whether you think five, he was six. protected by. You know the WBO and, and and Frank Warren. You know, amazing. I mean, you like I say, I think he's always done superbly well and made what he's got go a hell of a long way. But irrespective, as brave as a lion, the kid. Yeah, he's he? he absolutely he's, brave as a lion. He puts it on the line every time. Like, yeah. you, don't see, you won't see no, uh, won't see him back out. Of the no, fight. there's not a lot of quitting him, so. is there? Jesus, he's a brave kid. Uh, Brian Rose makes his comeback against uh, some kid, Ignacio Lucero Fraga. What do you think? Yeah, Brian Rose again coming back from a, you know, a bit of a, a boxing lesson uh, for a world may, title. May, may, maybe a real eye opener, in fairness, about levels. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this guy that he's boxing is, I think, he's eleven wins, four losses, three draws. So yeah. it's kind of like a fight to kind of ease him back. And I don't know where you take Brian Rose. Now. I know that's what I was it's, thinking. It's, it's, a hard, had, it's a very hard one yeah. to place him, isn't it? Because. Obviously, um, I, I've never met a boxer in, in my life that didn't think, I mean, apart from a journeyman, obviously, but a boxer who was actually shooting for it that didn't think he was going to become a world champion. And to be in a world title fight, and everyone predicted you would lose quite handily, and to lose quite handily, it almost suggests you shouldn't be in that rarefied atmosphere quite strongly. Mm. So after that, where'd you go oh, with yeah. it? Yeah, no, it's a very hard... I it's mean, very hard. You know, there's a few more paydays out there, no doubt. European, you know, you know so he's, in, in the old days, he would have been a good European level fighter, tough fights at European level. 
But that's that thing, isn't it, where again, it comes back to what I was saying earlier. You get British kids in world title fights that don't want to be in there. And it's a shame in a sense, because if he'd have maybe gone the other route, and there was a little bit more emphasis put on the European title, maybe fighting around that kind of era a couple more years, and then go for a world title fight. You know what I mean? People seem to get end up in world title fights a little bit too soon for me. Yeah, I think I think European title is is is, is a world should, title fights too soon. Yeah, so. but a European title, you should be proud of that. Oh, you, for you, sure. You're a champion of Europe. Oh, you know, for it's sure. a massive. You should be t- you should be proud of your southern area your southern title. Area, yeah, you win yeah. the southern area title. I mean, it's the biggest area in the country. Everyone's absolutely biting each other's hands off to get that title. Yeah. Big big title, big big title. But yeah, so I I just like you know before the all these guys obviously if you get a world title shot, I think like um, Eddie Hearn says you know sometimes you just got to take that shot if the money's right. Conversely, surely sometimes you haven't. I think I think if you're. It all depends you, how you think about the career and where you think the career's going. Exactly, yeah. and I think I think Brian Rose, you know, he's what. I sort mean, who've you, you had in world title fights over the last year that uh, like maybe eighteen months that didn't warrant being there? You had. Um, who, who, who was the lightweight kid who ended up in a world title fight? Um, not Tommy Coyle, who was the other kid? Um, what's it was in his corner? Gavin Reese. Well, but it, he, he, warranted, he warranted that, though, to be no, fair. No, no, no. Who was, um, who was, uh, who was uh, the middleweight kid from Repson that won the world title was in his corner? Um, oh, you, you, yeah, uh, he was welterweight, wasn't it? Lee Purdy. Lee Purdy, yeah. sorry, excuse me, I'm going frazzled here for a second. Darren Bark, I'm sorry, frazzling here, sorry. So you've got Lee Purdy was in a world title fight, in my opinion, didn't warrant being in it. You've got Brian Rose in a world title fight, didn't warrant being in it. I don't, know, I don't understand. It's got to be the leverage of their promoter that's getting them into these fights. Yeah, of course, it's, it's same as same as what happens in the city. It's all built on relationships, isn't it? Yeah, um, but, but I think it's a bit of a shame that the kids, because you never know how far they could have gone if they'd have actually been given a bit more of a grounding and maybe done a little bit more uh, of an apprenticeship before they got there. It's almost like they've been burnt out before they really yeah, should. Yeah, but on both sides, you know, people, people do, and you know, we probably guilty of it ourselves. That oh, right, he's just boxing. He's just, you know, like the Nathan Cleverly thing. You know, maybe you, you looked at what Warren was trying to do, and Cleverly says, "I want this uh, Kovalev fight." Yeah, egos get in the way. And then yeah, he gets, where, where'd you go with he that? He gets yeah. crushed, and people are saying, "Who's he box?" Blah, blah blah. So you can understand why the the fighters and the team think, well. Yeah, no, no, but, but this comes back to the Nathan Cleverly, Tony Ballou fight. You've got Nathan Cleverly, he's been smashed to bits by Kovalev. You've got uh, Tony Ballou, he's been smashed to bits by um, uh, uh, Stevenson. So there we are, jump out of light every week, out the cruise weight, and now all of a sudden we're world class again. It's like, well, you, these lads are world class. Mm. You can live with them. I'm not saying it's not a good fight, but let's not pretend what it. Let's not pretend it's something it's oh, not. No, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a, a great fight. It's, it's a, a great, great European, British, British, British level fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And, for and sure. but you know, having said that, I think cruiserweight is quite open. It isn't as. Uh... Do you think either of those geezers beats Huck? Do you, do you think know they? What? Do you think? Do you think they beat the Cuban? The Cuban German? I, 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 I think more so. I think Blue Blue could. Yeah, you're kind I, of into Blue. At only, only, yeah, you? because he's you got to give it, give it, give the lad a chance, and I mean. Oh, for sure, I but think, you know, like I say, going I'd off like, the subject, like, he'll like knock cleverly out. You do, do you? Yeah, I think he's going to knock him out. That's a, that's a big old statement. Yeah. Because at light heavyweight, I thought cleverly managed him really easily. Yeah, that's that's because it's light heavyweight. You think he was struggling to hit it, eh? Of course. Well, there you are. OK, uh, let's go to uh, our best friend from the East. The Eastern Block Bimbo. Let's see what the competition holds this week. I'm from the Eastern Bloc. This week's competition winner will win a ring limited edition t-shirt. It's got official ring logo on the back. It looks great on, but you're naughty naughty man. It looks even better off. See you next week. Fantastic, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful T-shirt. Um, okay, the question this week is: Julio Cesar Chavez, multi-weight world titleist, uh, senior, not junior. Um, 
join our blog on the ring1910.com underneath this film and just enter the answer to this question about Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. Who did he beat to win his first lightweight title? Not super featherweight, not welterweight, not light welterweight. Who did he beat to win his first lightweight title? Puerto Rican kid, give you a clue. Pop it on the, uh, pop it on the, uh, for, pop it on the blog. We've got a show here at the ring on the 11th of October, and Jack, you'll be making your comeback after your uh, Southern Area title fight. Coming down or weight that you're realistic at, in fairness to you, <coughs> cruiserweight obviously was a bit of a chancy one for us. We had, a, we gave it a bit of a go, but. Uh, no shame losing on points in a very, very, very close fight. But now you're coming back down to light heavyweight and chipping down. And on the journey down to light heavyweight, you're going to be fighting Elvis Dube. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really mind who who we got for this one. Really, um, again, you know, deal with him on the, on the Saturday. Hopefully, you know, well, in good fashion. And then, you know, um, I. I I'll say it now, I'm willing to go in with any light heavyweight in the country after, after uh, sat, uh, the 11th of October. So. After the 11th of October, why wouldn't you? Um, very exciting on the bill. Uh, going up the six rounders, uh, Robin Dupree um, coming in at Cruiser and uh, a guy we've got very high hopes for in Kay Prosper. I mean, Kay is a uh, you know, very impressive fighter, very impressive puncher. Four fights, two first round KOs. The last bout he had was just unbelievable. And even Mickey Helliot came up to me and said, you've got a really great fighter there. And we're all very proud of him. And um, first outing for our young lad, mean Jimmy McLean. Uh -huh. I think everyone's really excited about watching Jimmy box. So uh, next week we'll have some interviews with these boys. And so uh, tune in and watch that. Join our blog on the Ring 1910. We're always running competitions. And we'd also like to hear what your views are of what we've said here. I had some run-ins this week with uh, Daniel Woodgate, for instance, who uh, I know you've trained with, uh, about the, uh, he's actually in the same camp as you about the Smith fight. So Daniel, you're one who could join our blog. We'd be interested to hear your opinions and, uh, and everybody else as well. Until next week's show, from me, Berth, Jack Morris, have a good week.